Hi everyone and welcome to this Fantasy Art Friday video. In this video I'm going to be working on a drawing of an ice giant and I actually had a lot of fun planning this one and thinking about the design of this character. I wanted to place him up high in the mountains where it's really cold and there's some snow falling um, and you can really see the wind. I, I wanted to try and put more effort into creating an environment around this character as well. Um, so you'll see that later on. For the design of this character, as you can see while I work on the initial sketch and the pen outlines, I tried to add lots of shards of ice running vertically on his face, lots of sharp pieces of ice, uh, even circulating outwards from the centre of his face around his eyes, and you can just see lots of shards and crystals. Uh, adding them also around his body, um, so you can see his shoulder guard is just lots of sharp pieces of ice. Um, and then I also tried to add a hole in his chest. Uh, I was going to add some glowing effects to this later on to show a kind of magical energy that maybe brought this giant to life. Uh, that was my idea for it anyway. Um, also in the design of this image I added a comic panel with, with some parts of the giant overlapping that and I also added a little human character to add a sense of scale and perspective to this image um, to, and the, the giant has just noticed this little human character and, and is just they're about to either battle or kind of interact in some kind of way um, and I, I really loved thinking about the design of this drawing and the, the kind of layout and hopefully some kind of story behind it. Also, I should mention for the pen outlines, I used a Copic Multiliner SP 0.03mm. Extremely fine, but it allowed me to have that extra control over the line work, uh, just to keep the lines as smooth as possible. Also, for some of the thicker lines that I needed for the cliff edges in the foreground, I also used a Pigma Micron 08. Once I'd completed the outlines and I was happy with the layout of this drawing, it was time to add the colouring, and for the colouring of this drawing I used Copic markers, um, starting off with the giant's face. Um, I, the main colours I used for this, uh, for the warmer tones for the highlighted areas I used a pale heath marker for a really nice warm glowing effect. Then for the blue tones I used a mixture of ice blue, sky blue and deep reddish blue. Uh, also adding some of the really dark shaded areas around the right side of the drawing with Prussian blue. I tried to add some shading between all of the shards of ice, and then to help define the shape amongst all that shading, I used a white Prismacolor pencil to add some outlines. For the giant's eyes, for the whites of the eyes, I added some dark colouring with Prussian blue and deep reddish blue. Then for the pupils, I added a lighter colour with ice blue, making the pupils really stand out. And another way to make those eyes stand out was to use my Uniball Signo Broad white ink pen to add some really bright white highlights to them. Uh, also to add highlights to the nose and mouth and to add a line of highlighting going along the left side of the giant to show where the light is hitting. And I just continued the same colouring techniques for each of the different sections of the giant's body and I tried to change up the colouring technique for each of the different styles of shards. Um, trying to make some areas look a bit cooler and colder um, and just a bit darker and then I also really loved adding the highlighted sections with the pale heath marker it's definitely one of my favorite colors for adding warm tones to a drawing um, and I felt like it really worked well in this one in contrasting the, the cooler colors that I was using and I also used the Uniball highlighter pen in a bit of a different way for this drawing. Instead of just using it for the highlighting, I was using it to add some detailing. It helps to define some of the shapes around the shaded areas, but it also helps to add some texture. I, I was using it to create some scratchy lines along some of the shards to just show that kind of shiny surface. Um, it was fun to use it in a bit more of a detailed way. It was quite tough, so in some areas I had to kind of scratch away some of the, the lines because they were a bit too thick, but that also really helps to add to the detail, um, and I, I was really pleased with this process. I was also really glad that I chose to use Prussian blue to add some really deep, dark colouring to some of the areas, uh, especially in areas where the, the shards are overlapping. Um, while I was sticking with the, the sky blue and the deep reddish blue, um, those darker colours weren't really adding enough depth to the drawing. Uh, they were kind of a mid-tone. But as soon as I added Prussian blue to some of the undersides uh, to show where parts of the giant are overlapping, it just it, it helps to add more depth to the drawing and to define the shape. And I, if you're working on any, any drawings like this, I highly recommend 
adding some really dark tones to contrast the highlights because without Prussian blue in this drawing I, I felt like it would have just ended up looking too flat so I was really pleased that I ended up using this marker. Once I was finally happy with the colouring of the giant, it was time to move on to the, the colouring and the details of the environment that I wanted to add. Um, I was really excited about this because I wanted to try something a bit different and I wanted to be a bit more relaxed with it. So for the sky, I added a base layer of colour with Cool Grey 3. And then for the mountain in front of that, I used a mixture of Cool Grey 3 and 5. And then for the clouds in the background behind the mountain, I added uh, some shading towards the bottom with Cool Grey 3 and added some warm colour to them with the Pale Heath marker. Then for the clouds around the giant, I added some warmer tones with Pale Heath and then added shading over the top of them with Cool Grey 3 and 5, adding the same level of shading to each of the layers of clouds. Then I also blended that shading upwards into the colouring that I added previously to the giant uh, to show the giant kind of fading into the, the clouds below. After that, I started adding some loose snow effects with a white Prismacolor pencil, just adding some loose lines right across the drawing, uh, across the environment and across the giant, um, just to show where the wind is just picking up the snow and just streaking it right across the drawing. Then for the darker shading on the foreground, I used a mixture of Cool Grey 5 and 7, uh, trying to create the cliff edge that the little character is standing on. Um, and then for the character themselves, I added some bright red colouring with a crimson marker uh, to their cape, just trying to make them stand out as an important feature on this drawing. Um, to add some highlighting to the to the foreground, I used the white Prismacolor pencil and the Uniball highlighter pen. Then lastly, for the final stages of this drawing, I used the highlighter pen to add some more snow and to add some highlights running along the left side of the giant and also to add some glowing effects inside the giant's chest. And after that, this drawing was completed. Uh, overall, it took about five hours to complete, and as you can tell, I really, really, really enjoyed working on this one and planning it and just thinking about the features that I, like, I wanted to add to add to the overall kind of maybe a bit of a story to this one uh, with the little character standing at the bottom and the giants obviously just noticed them. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you have any suggestions for future fan art or fantasy art or any tutorial videos that you'd like to see, then please let me know in the comments below. Any suggestions are hugely appreciated. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you subscribe, and any likes or shares on this video, they really mean a lot to me. Uh, if you want to follow my progress and keep updated with all of the stuff that I work on through the week, then be sure to check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you all soon.